questions. The 3D camera tracker in Adobe After Effects CS6 is really powerful. It analyzes two-dimensional video clips and creates a 3D camera that works directly inside After Effects. It works with the lights and with objects, shadows, everything inside the program. It works really, really good most of the time. But occasionally the tracker gets confused if the clip that you're trying to analyze has too much motion. In this episode, we're going to show you how to temporarily mask something out, run a track to get more advanced accurate data. Let's go have a look. I'm going to start by giving a shout out to the folks at Pond5. They're a fantastic stock media marketplace. And I'll be using one of the clips from Pond5. And they also have um, audio files, soundtracks, sound effects, after effects comps, and illustration. All right. So I'm going to start by showing you the first thing, which is the clip itself. So if I play this clip and you look at it, you can see it's a gentleman walking across the camera. The camera is uh, tracking to one side. We've got an escalator moving in the background and we're ending up at a paneled wall. And when I first uh, looked at this, what is that paneled wall? It's a perfect high contrast bunch of crosses. And I thought the tracker would be perfect. It would lock onto those because they're high contrast. But let's go have a look at the result. So I've taken that clip and I dropped it in a comp here. And you can see that my tracking points look very, very small. And there's a point here at the beginning where it's unable to solve the camera. The 3D camera tracker does two things. First, it analyzes the clip and then it solves the camera. If it can't effectively solve the camera, it'll bring up this warning banner in front of you. And it can't in our case because there's just too much movement. The guy's moving, the escalator's moving behind and the camera's tracking. So what do we do? Let's go have a look. Um, we've taken that same clip and we brought it in here and added a simple mask and keyed that mask out. So if we just zoom that clip out and look, it follows him along, it masks out the escalator and just uh, moves off to the side. It's really allowing us to concentrate just on the wall. We're eliminating the moving data from the tracker. It's disregarding that as it's looking at that. And if we look over here on the bottom left, you can see we've added a mask. It's set to add an invert. Now, without invert, we're actually going to be tracking him. Little tip here, if I left it this way, I could use the 3D camera tracker to track the man walking across and I could attach something to him. In that case, uh, that's not what I want in this case. So I'm going to invert that and that is the data we want. Now we don't apply the camera tracker here. We actually take this comp with the mask and we drag that into another comp. So you can see here's our comp with the other masked comp. And this is where we run the tracker. So if I click inside here and look at our tracking points and hit play, you'll see that the camera tracking data is much, much better. It's actually locked right onto those points in the wall. It's absolutely solid. There's no slipping and sliding. And notice that the size of the points um, are actually more accurate to the data. If we go back to the original one that I sh showed you, if I go back here, you'll notice the points are much, much smaller. And that's because the movement that's in front of the camera, the guy walking along is confusing the tracker and it's not understanding the depth. And sometimes that'll be a, a, you know, a little indicator for you. It finishes the track, solves the camera, and you'll see these points that are really, really small. Now in the preferences in the 3D camera tracker, you can increase the size of those points. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the initial solve. Just back here in our final track, that's where we get some nice sizes in there. We can see it's accurate. I also want to point out that some movement is okay in the scene. If you notice over here on the right hand side, look at the points moving along the escalator. So they're actually following the steps. So I'm not really saying that you should have no movement ever. I'm just saying sometimes excessive movement will really cause a problem. Now, the last thing we have to do is we have to go in there and remove this black ghost walking across here. And we just go back to the original uh, mask comp that we had. And instead of add, we turn this to none. We could actually delete the mask at this point, but I might want to go back and use this for other data. So for, for my purposes, I'm just going to disable the mask, but I could as just as easily delete the mask. Now, when we go to our final track and we hit play, 
we can see I'll turn back on my uh, effects so you can see that. Now the guy is back and all the, the tracked camera points are in there. You could just as easily uh, select some points uh, if you didn't want them to be tracked. Remember, you can select any of these, delete them, or delete individual points. At this point, he we gets to the end in here and I could just as easily right click on any of these and create text, a solid, a camera, a null object that would be locked onto that. So remember, the next time you're trying to use the 3D camera tracker inside Adobe After Effects CS6 and you're getting errors or it's unable to solve the camera, just do a temporary mask and retract that, solve the camera, and then disable that mask and you'll have no slipping and sliding on your 3D camera track data. Thank you.